right, let's consider the Moon and Saturn. This is a difficult one. Um, why is that? Because the Moon is an enemy to Saturn. And again, we blame a lot of our problems on Saturn. But really, what we have to be aware of is that Saturn has three enemies, Sun, Moon, and Mars. And when it comes to the Lajitati of Ashtas, that's a, the agendas are in competition, meaning Saturn is not able to do his work because of the Sun or the Moon or Mars, which when Saturn can't do his work, that's when we find problems. You know, Saturn rules over the hard workers in our life, the things that remove toxins, the people that remove garbage, the people that take care of all the little things that break down. And it's not that those things themselves are problems. It's when they stop, then we're like, what happened here? <laughs> Why is there this problem? So the thing that gets in the way of Saturn is what really causes the problem. Now, Moon and Saturn. Again, the moon is our sense of self, our jiva, our ego, our soul, our personal sense of self, that little limited individual that says, I am me. Um, and whatever the moon is with or, or influenced by, um, conjunctions of moon Saturn, oppositions of moon Saturn, aspects of Saturn to the moon and so on, that's what the person's going to identify with as me. Moon and Saturn, they identify with problems. They ident identify with lack of skill, they identify with sorrow, depression, suffering. So they identify with obstructions. So Moon and Saturn combinations are typically difficult because there is a sense of the me, the I, can't express myself freely. I can't let the light of divine consciousness, the sun, reflect off the moon and shine into the world. And that hurts. So our emotions feel restricted, you know, squashed, um, not validated. But that's because that's what the moon is looking at. The moon is identifying with it. So I hope this makes sense. Um, positively, this can give a person very good problem-solving skills because they're fixated on problems. I'm talking about moon-saturn conjunctions. This can make a person very exact and detailing in their work. Why? Because again, the person is focused on the problems. And those works of art those things that are extremely beautiful or are well built, they come about because probably someone with a Moon-Saturn combination looked at it and said, here's all the crap that's going to go wrong with that. Now Mars would help with engineering and such, but you get the idea that it is the Moon-Saturn combination that's going to say, well, that's not going to work because of this. And so essentially with Moon-Saturn, you go through all the things that aren't going to work until eventually you get what does work, right? So Moon Saturn um, can be very good with technical thinking, not necessarily very good for emotional satisfaction. Uh, it can be good for um, yogas of detachment, things that require detachment. Otherwise, what we see is a person becomes withdrawn, or they're used to being sad, or they feel the world is cold or restricting to them. Um, and it can make a person overly fixated on their sense of honor, um, overly fixate on hard work. When hard work is good and it's necessary, but every now and then you got to kind of tap into the moon Jupiter energy. Um, it can show a person having difficulty communicating their needs because they feel like they're not going to get heard or they're not worthy. So moon Saturn combinations are fairly difficult combinations. It can show a person who tries too hard to be validated or tries too hard to achieve greatness within the world. Again, because that moon is the sense of self, the ego, and whenever we get Saturn influencing the moon, that's what the person is going to see and identify with. So yogas for detachment are extremely helpful. Uh, emotional therapies, laughter therapy, forcing yourself to have fun. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I kid you not. If you've got Moon-Jupiter combinations, it's going to feel weird for you to force yourself to have fun. You're going to be more prone to the depressive side of things. But you have to train yourself to have fun, to enjoy yourself, to laugh, even if it feels fake, even if it feels completely untrue, because you see the crap in the world, the depression, but you need to train yourself to see that, yes, of the Four Noble Truths, life is suffering. That's the reality. Fine. But that doesn't mean that's all you look at is the fourth or is the noble truth that life is suffering. It means you admit it, 
you're realistic about it, but now you need to re-sculpt your consciousness to figure out how can I bring enjoyment into my life. That's not always easy, but it's well worth it if you can put your attention towards it. Now, Moon and Saturn transits, you know, this is related to the idea of the Sadi Sati period. That's when you've got your Moon in a sign, and Saturn is transiting over the sign that the Moon is in. Depending on what house that occurs in, depending on what house the Moon rules over, that typically brings a sense of emotional flatness, or a lack of joy, or like you're not able to achieve your goals, or there are many obstacles and restrictions to getting that emotional fulfillment that maybe you had previously. And so the, the most intense period of it is about a two and a half year period as Saturn transits over the sign with the moon. So working hard, um, forcing yourself to have fun, to get out and do things and be with friends. Um, working hard is really the big one because if you're working hard, you're not necessarily paying attention to how you feel bad. Uh, but forcing yourself to get out and have fun that's required with this Moon-Saturn combination. Doing mantras to Saturn, mantras to the Moon, mantras to Jupiter to help you move through the obstacles, mantras to Ganesh. Thinking positively, forcing yourself to see the good, and that's the key. I'm going to reiterate that over and over again. You have to force yourself to see beyond the Moon and Saturn. If you don't, you're going to be trapped in your karma, and that's not going to be very much fun. Now, difficulties can still arise, but that's, again, one of the noble truths. Life is suffering. So you admit it, yes, difficulties are there, that's life. But you don't let it get you down. You don't let it get you down. And that's not always easy. In fact, sometimes it's damn near impossible. But if you continue to try and trust and commune with your sense of higher power or something beyond the mind, beyond the little sense of self, to transcend that little sense of self, um, the Moon-Saturn transit doesn't necessarily have to be a crushing blow. Now again, that needs to be assessed based on your chart because everyone's Moon-Saturn transits are going to be different depending on what dasha you're in, what house it's in, what does the Moon rule over, what does Saturn rule over, how does it go through the Vargas. So it's not a cookie-cutter approach here. We do need to look at the chart in detail. But these are some things to consider in relationship to Moon-Saturn combinations within the birth chart, uh, yogas, as well as Moon-Saturn transits.